is Wednesday, November 17, and this is your Barbados Today Evening News Update. A new project will roll out on Friday to crack down on rising coronavirus deaths and infections among the youth and the elderly. It's called the COVID Community Engagement Project, and lead coordinator Arlene Husbands told a news conference this morning it seeks to identify the needs of communities affected by the viral illness and empower residents to better protect themselves. Husband says the project will first target several high-risk communities. We're starting off, say, in Wellington Street. Then we're looking at Bayville, the New Orleans. Um, we're also going into the, the Christchurch area, the Watton, Gall Hill, Silver Hill, um, St. Joseph, um, Lamins, St. George, Constant, Ellerton, um, Belle Plaine, St. Andrews. So it is a wide, it's very wide, David, and we, we intend to be able to cover as many as possible. We recognize the, the holiday seasons are approaching us, and that is when people are going to be really out and about. And so we want to get in there as early as possible and trying to help them in terms of managing themselves and coping with COVID in the environment. We don't want them to say we can't have a good Christmas, but we want you to do so carefully. The project is a collaborative effort with the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, the Task Force for Global Health, the University of the West Indies, the private sector, and non-governmental organizations. Suzette neblet Strawn, a social worker and counselor with the Ministry of Health and Wellness, said participants will have to complete a 15-question survey. She said the main aim is to meet the needs of the communities involved. We don't just want to go in, as Arlene would have said, to give them skills, impart knowledge and then leave them like that. We want to have follow-up being done and that follow-up would be ably done by their gatekeepers, by their community persons that they're well aware of. And those persons would feed back to us within this um, team that has been set up. We also would want to engage the community at a very personal level. We want persons to understand we're not coming to take over your communities. We're coming to assist. We want you to understand we're here to help. We care. And that's why we're doing this. But we don't want to do it as persons, as I said, just coming into your community. We want you to meet with us and to work with us to improve your community. You tell us what the issues are. We get information through our survey and together we work as a team to improve your community. More than 7,500 persons are now in home isolation, and according to Dr. Adana Grandison, the consultant manager of home quarantine, the program has been going well for the most part. She, however, revealed that several persons have been caught flouting home isolation and quarantine rules, and they have been made to complete their remaining treatment at government-run facilities. Dr. Grandison told a news conference that the Royal Barbados Police Force has been asked to intervene in some cases. There are some persons who grossly uh, abuse the powers that are there and will go about whether they want to continue to visit their, their consorts or they want to just continue with life as normal. And we generally tend to see that with persons who are feeling well. Um, as I said, this number has not been big, a uh, very large number. It has been less than 50, I can tell you that. Um, those persons have been brought to the attention of the CMU, which is the COVID monitoring unit, and they actually perform their investigations with an escalation um, as needed to the Royal Barbados Police Force um, for further action. Um, there are some persons who we know that have breached and we intervene immediately and we would place, based upon the fact that they are considered to be a flight risk, um, we would place those persons in mandatory quarantine because it is a public health um, situation that we're dealing with here in the middle of a pandemic. And certainly the challenge of spreading the virus is one of our, our greatest concerns. The program has, however, had much success, and Dr. Grandison noted that 4,737 persons have been discharged to date. But she's concerned that some persons are still continuing to refuse care and help from health authorities, and this sometimes end in death. We've had situations where there are persons who, who would get some measure of testing, probably not the most official means of testing, and then attempt to provide care for themselves. You know, and, and again, when they get into very dire situations, then they reach out for help. And in every situation, we have attempted to provide care. Sometimes we have physically gone on the ground and, and tried to convince them, please come and get the help that you need. Um, but there are some persons who are, are scared to inertia.
to just don't want to do it. And yes, we have had situations like that. We've seen we've seen them present at the QH and we've seen some of them actually pass at home. In the latest COVID-19 update, the death toll from the viral illness has topped 200 as two women and three men, all Barbadians, passed away from the viral illness on Tuesday. Four of them died while at the Harrison's Point Isolation Facility. Three men, aged 58, 75 and 77, and a 64-year-old woman. An 89-year-old woman also died at the Blackman and Gollop Isolation Facility. They were all unvaccinated. On Tuesday, 284 people, 119 males and 165 females were identified as COVID-19 positive from 1,590 tests conducted by the Besta Santos Public Health Laboratory. Of the new cases, 56 persons were under the age of 18 and 228 were 18 years and older. Under the National Vaccination Program, the total number of persons who are fully vaccinated is 133,284. That's 49.2% of the total population or 58.4% of the eligible population. Police are seeking the public's assistance to help locate a missing American woman. She's 30-year-old Samara Bristow, who has been staying at Ericot St. Thomas. She was reported missing by her mother, Samantha Bristol of Holly's, Queens, New York, who said she last heard her daughter sometime between 6.45 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. on Tuesday. Samara is between 5 feet 7 inches and 5 feet 8 inches tall and is stoutly built and full-breasted. She has a light brown complexion and speaks with an American accent. Her nose is pierced once, her ears are pierced multiple times. She has her hairstyle in black box braids. She has a slightly long forehead, oval shaped eyes which appear to be puffy, small mouth and lips and straight teeth. Her clothing at the time is unknown. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Samara Bristol is asked to contact the District D Police Station at 419-1726-1729, Police Emergency at 211, or any other police station. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated, and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80-year-old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness has relaxed some restrictions aimed at limiting the spread of COVID-19 and the opposition has declared its support for the measures. TVJ's Vashan Brown tells us more. Come tomorrow, November 18, the island-wide curfew will begin at 9 p.m. and end at 5 a.m. the following day. Opposition spokesman on finance Julian Robinson says it makes sense to give people the extra hour. If you're on the road at 9 o'clock, you still have a lot of people trying to get home. And so I think it, it's a good move to give persons an additional hour to complete their business after work for small businesses that depend on patronage in the night, whether they be supermarkets, the pan chicken man, fast food entities, the extra hour will allow them to earn more. So we, we take no issue with that. The Prime Minister also announced changes to the quarantine requirements for fully vaccinated travellers. Effective November 18, if fully vaccinated travellers take a PCR test prior to coming to Jamaica, they do not have to quarantine. Mr. Robinson says he does not have any objections to that announcement. But at the same time, Mr. Robinson wanted to know about incentives for those who have been fully vaccinated. I do believe some form of encouragement where people who have played by the rules, have done everything. I'm fully vaccinated, Chris. I would like my booster. When can I get it? I want my third shot, right? Um, so those who are fully vaccinated, I believe, should enjoy some privileges that those who have chosen not to be fully vaccinated. On the international front, 
New outbreaks of bird flu have been reported across Europe and Northern Asia. The disease has also caught the attention of global health officials, with 21 people in China being infected with the virus. Al Jazeera's Tony Cheng reports. The bird flu outbreak in Europe has now forced these geese inside. Bred for their fatty livers for the luxury pâté foie gras, the farmers can't risk an outbreak from wild migrating birds outside. In Thailand's wet markets, the poultry may not be as valuable, but here, probably more than anywhere else, they know how costly bird flu can be. Back in 2004, when bird flu hit Thailand for the first time, they had to cull more than 60 million birds, devastating for decades what had been at the time the largest poultry export business in the world. In recent days, outbreaks have been detected, along with a new strain, H5N8. Culls are already underway in South Korea, Japan and China, the only effective way to stop the spread. And in China, the new strain has already jumped into the human population, infections that have left six people dead. There is always a potential that one of these viruses once will adapt itself so it can jump to two humans. There could be one similar as the 1918 Spanish flu that one day comes from birds and makes its way into humans. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.